Near the Pacific coast of North America, there was once a single trail, an Indian trail. White men came to this land, their carts and wagons making two trails side by side. Years went by, the wagon trails became roads, then highways, each year growing wider, straighter, faster. Each year, more lorries carrying heavier loads. Each year, more people, more cars, more highways. This film describes some of the places and people connected by one of these highways. From the Mexican border, the highway runs parallel with the Pacific coast through California through Oregon and Washington to Canada. We begin near the Mexican border in an orange grove in Southern California. The fruit grows in the sunny winter days, but when the sun goes down, the nights are often cold. Ground temperatures in the rest of the San Gabriel Valley are expected to hit 27 degrees by 2 a.m. The forecast for Orange County is as follows. Sometimes at night, the temperature may fall suddenly, a matter which may be of little interest to you if you're young, or if you don't happen to be an orange grower. But if you are an orange grower, you will have to get up to protect your trees from the frost. When the thermometer falls below freezing point, frost settles on the leaves and fruit. Wind machines, however, stir up the air and will prevent the frost from spoiling the fruit. Spring comes, the fruit ripens, and soon the crop is ready to be picked. These oranges will be eaten by many different people. Some of the fruit will go to markets throughout the United States. Others will go to the coastal ports for export to markets overseas. At ports all along the Pacific coast, you can find men loading provisions, among them oranges. These men are the crew of a fishing boat, and they're getting ready to spend weeks at sea fishing for tuna. After many weeks at sea, the boat returns to harbour laden with tons of fish. Fish that will be distributed to markets throughout the United States. We travel northwards up the highway to the oil fields of Ventura.
An engineer and his family are having breakfast. The family needs many things produced by other people. Clothes, furniture, cutlery, and food, such as fish and oranges. In turn, the engineer helps to provide oil that other people need. Time to go, kid. Wait a minute, Jerry. You forgot something. Thanks, Mom. This is the oil derrick that holds the drill. And this is one section of the drill pipe that will go down a mile or more into the earth. When one section has drilled down until it's almost out of sight, the men use huge wrenches to fasten on another section. The drill goes on turning for many weeks, biting inch by inch into the earth. When at last the drill reaches the oil, a pump brings it to the surface. The crude oil runs through pipelines to the nearby refinery, where it's converted into fuel for motor vehicles and oil for machinery. Petrol and oil tankers leave the refinery and move out onto the highway. As they travel northwards through the broad coastal valleys, they pass huge fields of vegetables. The men cultivate the fields with machines that use petrol and oil brought from the earth by other men. The fields produce thousands of lettuce, vast quantities of onions, celery, potatoes, beans. The food grown in the coastal valleys is distributed to markets all over the United States. A few miles out in the Pacific Ocean, a freighter is returning to harbour. moves slowly through the morning fog. Past the great bridge that marks the Golden Gate. And then half an hour later, the fog is gone and San Francisco rises from the edge of the bay. There are many ports along the Pacific coast. The ships take on board the produce made and grown by other men. Oil for the engines, food for the crews, goods manufactured in the industrial cities. In exchange, they discharge cargo from many lands, South America, India, Japan. Tea and tin cinnamon and soya beans, rope, and these huge chunks of rubber. 
Other men will convert the rubber into tires and tennis balls and many other articles. Over the Golden Gate Bridge roll the lorries, carrying the imported produce. Northwards they travel into countryside that becomes greener with every mile. At times, the highway winds along the sheer cliff face above the sea. Sometimes it speeds past orchards of apples, pears and plums. The fruit from the orchards of Oregon and Washington is distributed to markets throughout the country. At the northern boundary of Oregon, the highway meets the great river of the northwest, the Columbia River. On the one side, Oregon, on the other, Washington. Up the Columbia River is the huge Bonville Dam. The river flows westwards past Mount Hood and the town of Portland. Along the river, Indians fish for salmon that come in from the ocean to lay their eggs. Beyond the river, the highway runs deeper into great forests. Here is a lumberman and his children. The children are going to school, taking with them fruit from the orange groves 2,000 miles away. The lumberman drives to work on tires that were made by other people. The saw he uses is driven by petrol made from oil provided by other people. The lumbermen are also part of this complex community. They too provide goods needed by other people. Timber for houses, for furniture. Timber for boats, bridges, lorries, and a thousand other articles. The people who live along the Pacific coast of North America are interdependent. The lumbermen, engineers, market gardeners, fishermen, farmers. Each contributes by providing the goods and services needed by others.